And welcome back. A busy uh, hour ahead. Now, public sector unions have rejected the 4.5% that was offered by government in the wage negotiations that are currently underway at the Public Service Coordinating Bargaining Council. Unions had demanded a 10% wage increase for 2022 for all public servants. Now, economist Dr. Dick Forsland says that it is understandable for unions to reject the offer, but he does believe that the government will agree to the 10% wage demand because it will be contradictory to its own austerity measures that were announced during the budget speech in February. Uh, Dr. Dick Forsland is Senior Economist at Alternative Information and Development Centre, and we're also joined by Public Servants Association's Ruben Maleka. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us this morning, and welcome to Morning Live. Ruben, I'm going to start with you. Uh, if you could just please give us the latest uh, developments with regard to the negotiations. Yeah, uh, good morning. Good morning, Sakina, and good morning to uh, Dick Fosland and the viewers at home. Yes, uh, we are at a stage where uh, we have progressed. Um, although one that necessarily can say is a progress because uh, the employer has actually moved from 0% to 4.5%. Um, obviously, uh, one making calculations can uh, actually, uh, uh, you know, just conclude that the 4.5% is actually the uh, the gratuity that you already had last year is been now being converted into a percentage. So we have actually now said to the employer that uh, we reject that particular 4.5%. They must go back and revise. As we know, uh, Sakina, that uh, the current economic climate would not allow workers to even consider anything below inflation. Uh, not also looking at inflation, looking at the cost of life that we are in, looking at the petrol price, looking at the food uh, price that we are currently in, all this compounded means that uh, anything below 4.5 and not closer to our demand of 10% would not be acceptable. Now, Ruben, we know that government's austerity policy says that salary increases are impossible under the current economic conditions. Are union representatives adamant that you will not accept that statement and the offer that is currently on the table? Absolutely. We would not accept that particular uh, gesture that the employer is showing us because it does not correspond with the conduct of some of the politicians. And obviously, if you ask a public servant today, and just what happened last week when we heard that uh, uh, art and culture is going on with the flag of 22 million, we don't know whether it's going to be a Gucci flag or a Louis Vuitton flag, but nonetheless, that also, such conduct uh, would not be, you know, can be very, very uh, palatable to our members who would not want to see themselves not being able to afford to go to work. Because today, as we speak, most of our members are <coughs> even calling to say that why can't just be a way of saying to mitigate the transport cost? Uh, because you have seen also uh, yesterday most of the taxi association, because that is the only available transport because we no longer have parasa. They have actually put up a, a high amount of increase in terms of taxi fares. So majority of, of public servants are also going to be affected. They are even calling that uh, we should actually immediately negotiate that they must start working from home because they cannot afford transport. So, Dr. Dick Forsland, against that backdrop that uh, Ruben Malika has just sketched for us and uh, what government has been saying about austerity measures, we look at the cost of these increments that the unions are demanding, and it's estimated uh, to be around 49.2 billion rand that would have to come from the fiscus. Can government afford that? Well, uh, affordability is a matter of choice, and... Uh, I mean, here we are not only dealing with economic constraints, we are dealing with political constraints. And, uh, I mean, if you look at the February budget, there the wage bill or the wage increase, should the number of uh, public sector employees be constant, there the budget for 2.1% uh, in, in, in the budget. Uh, and uh, as I understand it, that is also the papers that had been distributed to the unions. Uh, so, so 
if they put forward a 4.5%, and I understand that there's a trick here also, because the agreement last year was that when they started the negotiation, then the cash increase would sort of disappear. So I, I have to ask Ruben there, but, but I guess that they kind of have included that they bring it back into this 4.5%. And, and I understand that this is completely unacceptable for the, for the trade unions. I mean, in, in, uh, until the government uh, go away and break with its extreme austerity policy, they will have to continue to underbalance the, the budget to, to sort of shape up the public sector and the situation for public sector workers. And uh, I mean, the, the, the viewers should know also that the, the the director general of the Department of Public Administration, they have, she has of officially acknowledged that there are 165,000 vacant posts in the public sector. So there are 39,000 uh, nurses and doctors and other health staff officially missing, and there are 73,000 uh, employees in the in public schools missing, 73,000. And then you have additional uh, vacancies up to 165,000 uh, persons, which have retired, they have quit their jobs, they have died. Uh, and then the, the provinces and the government is not replacing these individuals who, who who drop out for some one or other reason from the public sector. So the work situation also for public sector workers at hospitals, at schools and, and so on is very dire. And you need to have a break with this austerity policy. Uh, and you have you have you 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 need to really sit and rethink the the fiscal policy of the of the government. So uh, um, yeah, that's in, and until they do that, uh, until they change to a more progressive tax policy, until they break with the extreme austerity, yeah, then they have to continue to underbalance their budgets. Mm. Uh, Dr. Forsen, and you have been saying this that government has to stop this austerity, and you've also been saying that they need to use the funds that are available but where are these funds well point one uh, first we have the issue of progressive taxation where you have seen uh, uh, subse subsequent uh, tax cut in the personal income tax and now recently also in the in the tax on profit in the corporate income tax uh, for 15 years you have to bring back the the lifestyles uh, the taxation of lifestyles to what it was about 2004 2005 you can't square the circle and and uh, sort of have have a expanded public sector and then 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 not tax those who can pay uh, for it uh, after their ability to pay. You can't square the circle like that. So that's the first thing. And I mean, for the public sector union, and in order to sort of uh, uh, construct a wage deal which is more affordable in, in quotation mark, well, the, the, the popular wage freeze, which is so popular at the Treasury, I think it should be applied to, to the wage group from, from level 13 to 22 in order. You have to have a redistribution of income also in the public sector. Then there's another debate that we have had with the public sector unions, which is a politically sensitive debate, but it is a fact that you have a large, the biggest state pension fund uh, in Africa, which is running with a surplus of uh, 55 billion rand uh, last year, and you have to expand, in our opinion, the, the lending from this fund to the Treasury and even to ESCOM, <laughs> if so, because they are already lending money to, to the budget from the state pension fund. But they are doing it as if they are a part of the finance industry at, at market rates, at 10 percent market rates. And in our view, that is completely unnecessary. Uh, if you want to kind of bring down the debt service costs. And the pensions will not be affected by that. They had these surpluses before they 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 uh, they uh, would do such uh, they, they would do such a such a lending. So 
Yeah, then you have, of course, uh, all the, the looting of the, of the public sector. You have the corruption. You have the overcharging of the procurement and so on. But that is where you end up if you have a small public sector. Then you have to have more procurement, more tenders and so on. And then you increase the risk that you are getting overcharged. So it's it's a it's a sort of it's a broad policy debate, and it's a it's a kind of like many things that must happen here, and you have to at the bottom of it is to break with the austerity policy, and until they do that, yeah, then they have to take the spoon in their nice hand, so to speak, and they have to bite the bullet or whatever. They have to under continue to underbalance the budget, and until they have made up their mind if they will continue along this path, and it has to do with infrastructure, the situation in, 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 uh, in public schools and hospitals. It has to do with the sort of tens of thousands, close to 200,000 vacancies, because the 165,000 vacancies is only official figure. Mm. The, the growth of the public sector has not kept up with the population growth since 2000. So, Ruben Malika, let me come back to you. As things stand, uh, government, of course, has um, rejected that 10 percent hike that you've put on the table. Uh, we know that, um, you know, inflation is very real at this stage. But um, isn't 4.5 percent better than that offer of last year of 1 percent, which you accepted in the end? Look, the 4.5 uh, that we're talking about is myth. It's actually nothing because it's actually the cash gratuity that was given last year is now simply going to be converted into a, a percentage. Remember, they're giving this 4.5% but taking away the cash gratuity. So it means that we are actually going back to the same situation of last year of being given what we already have. So one thing for sure that is a problem that I agree with uh, uh, the, the doctor here is that the public service, when you talk about the wages in the public service, we are only focused on the public service, but we don't go beyond the sector. And that is what we have discussed at the public sector summit, to say that let's look at who actually benefit from the fiscals as a salary. We've got public entities such as Brasa, such as uh, ESCOM, but let's compare salaries of what is the CEO of, uh, of, of SASA, of, of Prasa salary is 10 million. But let's compare salary of a DG of a department is 2 million. So with this compared, one can say that why do you always say that the public service is the one that is actually eating more of the fiscals? And we have these parasitals and entities which from time to time, they are not even performing. They are even eating from uh, what you call always bail out because they cannot perform. The other factor that is not being considered is that we are, as doctor said, there are large vacancies in the public service. Maybe it's the intention of government to privatize the public sector. Instead of making public service to be capacitated, they rather even go to a process of outsourcing the tendering, or if it's not tendering, it's consultation. The same public servant, they can let the public servants to leave the public service resigning because of no salary increase. But uh, just a day after, they are willing to pay that pe the very same individual on a consultative, consultative uh, fee that is more than 10 times a salary. So that, there's a lot of contradiction that is happening in the public service in relation to tender, in relation to consult, uh, consultation, and instead of capacitating the public service with the same individuals to make sure that they're well paid, instead of them leaving the public service to become consultant and too expensive to the public mm. sector. Ruben Malika, Dr. Forson, we're out of time, but very briefly, in less than 30 seconds, if you can, uh, Ruben, you first. Uh, where to now? What's the way forward? We are meeting on the 6th of June. We expect that will be respected. Uh, that government will be serious. They'll come to us with a serious offer that we can take back to members for mandating. And what would be that serious offer? Uh, Ruben? Sorry, did you ask me a question? And I, I was asking Ruben, but I don't think he can hear me. But Dr. Forson, for you, the way forward, please. 
Well, I think that, that uh, we need a campaign where the public sector unions and even all unions are, are a part of it and the social movement against austerity in the country because uh, the government, I mean, next year it's even worse. Next year they have budgeted in the, because that is when uh, the finance minister believe we, we will kind of uh, have a so-called net uh, primary surplus in, in, in the budget, which is impossible. So next year, well, in July, they will start to negotiate about the, the actual sort of cut in, in, in the wages. So the, the public sector unions, I think they should really appeal to the public to be to campaign against austerity and uh, and uh, and the budget policy of the government. But as I said, until this, the government has to yield and they have to before they make up their minds to break with the current policy, they have to continue to underbalance their budgets. It's, there's no other way. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for your time this morning. Dr. Dick Forslund, the Senior Economist at Alternative Information and Development Centre and Assistant General Manager at uh, the Public Servants Association, Ruben Malika, our guest there, discussing the 2022-2023 wage negotiations in the public sector. Let's take a quick break before news headlines.